Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Leaders Live. This is Beth Stellato from the Corporate Communications team, and I hope you've been enjoying our recent episodes. We would love to hear your feedback, and you can email us at employee.communications at newellco.com to share your thoughts on the podcast or what you'd like to hear about in the future. Today, we have a really exciting guest. His name is Jimmy Bainham and he is a senior director of e-commerce global business development but he's also getting his executive doctorate of business administration at drexel university in philadelphia and the focus of his studies is really on communicating and managing teams in a virtual environment so we thought there couldn't be a more perfect person to share some tips with us while many of us at the company are working from home and will be for the next few weeks. So I hope you enjoy my conversation with Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing today, Beth? Good, good. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us, especially on a Monday morning. Tell us a little bit about your current role at Newell. Yeah, so I'm currently the leader of the international e-commerce team for Newell Brands. I joined the company about seven months ago. I was uh, working for a Swedish paper company that was headquartered out of Philadelphia. Was there for about five years, and then prior to that, I was with Georgia Pacific in various roles in Atlanta, Georgia for 17 years. Um, Today, uh, the international e-commerce team is made up of team members from around uh, 20 different countries around the globe. And we currently actually actively work to sell uh, all all of the different brands uh, where we can uh, in all those different countries. That's awesome. You obviously joined the company at a really exciting time. And I know that there's a tremendous opportunity for the e-commerce business internationally. So I'm sure you've got your hands full. Uh, In addition to your day job, you are also completing a doctorate at Drexel University, as I understand it. So can you, first of all, confirm that that is indeed true, because it's very impressive, but also tell me a little bit about what you're studying. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. So as I call my hobby right now, my hobby is actually uh, back in school again. Um, I am currently getting my uh, DBA or Doctorate of Business Administration from Drexel University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, about a year and a half ago, I, I thought about this and I thought about how could I improve my leadership skills and how could I be a better leader of a business. And one of the things that I thought would be something that could be very helpful was to understand how academic research combined with business experience could actually help you make better decision makings and actually make you a better leader. Um, so I went back to school. They have a great program there. It's a program where it's a part-time residential program, residency program, where you're on campus for only a few days throughout the year. The rest of the time you're working on your own. Um, and the topic I picked, I wanted to understand sort of what the leader of the future is going to need. So I've been leading uh, teams probably for over 30 years now. Uh, I started out as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army at, at Fort Bragg. And so when I think about leaders of the future, I think we're going to be leading a lot more of virtual teams. So these teams where it's a combination of members that are not all in the same geographical location. Um, So I'm currently studying um, virtual global virtual teams with a specific emphasis on how do they communicate and share knowledge across these teams. Wow, that is really impressive. Um, I think that when I want to be a better leader, I usually go and and read an article on Forbes. I can't say I've ever considered going to get my doctorate, so I'm (laughs) really impressed by that. Um, So we're going to focus our conversation today on leading virtually, but first I want to ask you, do you have any tips for individual contributors to stay productive and connected to their colleagues right now? Yeah, I would say there's some interesting things you can do in a virtual environment, especially for those that are new to a virtual environment. Um, One of the things I want to remind people of is that the the power of nonverbal cues. So if you've just gone from an office environment and now you're going to a virtual environment, in that office environment, you would have had the opportunity to schedule a meeting, get to a conference room, stop by somebody's uh, cube or desk or maybe in the break room and have a quick conversation. And you're actually having that conversation face to face is what we would talk about in, in research. And in that face to face conversation, you get body language, you get facial expressions, you get cues as to what's happening in that conversation in addition to verbal. 
Well, when we go to a virtual, sometimes we forget about that. We forget about the power of the nonverbal when we go virtual. And sometimes we're not comfortable with technology. So the first step we might take is actually just do a telephone conference and not use the video portion of a particular application. But with that, you know, research shows that 66% of all communication comes from these nonverbal cues. So you really are missing that if you don't include that when you go to a virtual environment. So I encourage everybody as they're working virtually, please use the video chat. But with that also, you know, I think as leaders, we have to make sure we create a trusting and a comfortable and safe environment for people to use video. Because this video, Work From Home, actually takes a little bit different course in that it's from our homes and we're seeing a more personal side of people versus a work environment. And so people may be hesitant to use video because it's showing something more personal about them. So leaders need to understand that and be comfortable with it. And then as team members, we have to say, you know, take the chance. It's OK. It's OK if you have uh, children in the background, if you have pets running around or noises come up. That's all part of the virtual environment. And it also makes things pretty interesting if you're all sitting at home and you're trying to connect virtually. And that is so true. And I, I know I've said this to a number of different people, but I, first of all, I feel like the company is so unified right now, at least certainly more than it has been in my time at Newell since 2017. But one of the things, you know, you talk about silver linings, one of the things that's come out of this work from home situation for many of us at the company is that we're seeing a very personal side of our colleagues, the people we work for, we work with, our leaders. Um, I've loved seeing people's homes, people's kids, people's dogs, and I think it's it's definitely made me feel more connected to the people I work with. So I think that's really, really great advice. So. You talked about uh, the fact that you've you know, managed teams for about 30 years now. So obviously this is a new environment really for all of us. Uh, I don't think any of us could have predicted we'd be operating in this type of environment a year ago or even a few months ago. But what are your top three tips for leaders managing teams in this environment? Yeah, I would say uh, a couple of things here. Um, one of the things would be that um, uh, flexibility. I mean, I think we've talked about that a lot, but flexibility with uh, timing, time schedules, things like that, especially if you're in a global operations, understanding what the normal work hours are within a virtual team is different by country and by region. And so they may not apply to the country that you're in when you're interacting with those countries. So you need to uh, understand what is that work hours to start, finish, be flexible with your time. I think as a leader, I try to engage myself in my team's normal work hours versus forcing them to adjust to my time. Mm -hmm. I think that makes them feel more comfortable with that. Um, and also, I would say if you're in a, in a global situation or outside of your particular country is what I call cultural intelligence and, and through research. Understand um, that most people around the globe, English is a second language. Mm -hmm. That's a great so what, point. That, what that means is that when you're engaging and you're a primary English speaker and a, someone who's a second language English speaker, they may take longer pauses during discussions. And it may make you feel uncomfortable because there's a pause and you might think instinctively that you're, it's your turn to, to speak next because they have paused. But what I've learned through research and also through practice with my team is really they're translating what they want to say, and it just takes them a little bit longer. So having pauses during your discussions, understanding it's a second language uh, so that that pause doesn't throw off the conversation. Also, I would say cultural intelligence. If you're, if you're again speaking with those that are with a second language of English, speak slower. I can get going really fast if I get excited, but remember that person again is translating that or trying to keep up. So having a slower pace, keeping up makes it easier for them to follow along and, and things like that. So I think that's something, especially in a global team and a global company that we have today that we should think about is what is it? Where are we speaking from? Who are we speaking to? Be flexible, understand the different cultural nuances um, and figure that out. I think what you said before about pausing is so interesting and I'm I'm actually really embarrassed to say that I had never thought about that before and it makes so much sense. I feel like I'm on calls with people from around the world a, a good amount, probably not quite as much as you are, but I also think that translates to just different communication and different work styles, even for people who are native English speakers to realize that people communicate in different ways, but that's such a great point. On a personal level, what are you doing to get through this? 
this period of working from home and uncertainty in general? Yeah, I think the, the thing that I talk to my team about is uh, coming up with a rhythm. What is the, the rhythm of, of working from home? Now, in, in my normal interactions, I work from home a lot or I'm traveling a lot and things like that. But I think for me personally during this time is what is the rhythm? If anything, the most thing that I've been working on is every week I have a different rhythm of phone calls checking in with my team members around the world. My first week, I tried to do all mornings, early mornings with Europe and then all evenings with Asia Pacific. And I slowly realized even if I took a break in the middle of the day, it still felt like I was working all day because I started early, ended late and it was all about yeah. work. So then the next week, I tried to shift everything early morning and from early morning running all the way through to like two o'clock and realized that I was missing lunch every day and not eating till three <laughs> o'clock. So, so this week, I'm actually going to try to break it up, have some in the morning lunch and then some in the afternoon. So I think it's to me, it's been a rhythm trying to figure out the rhythm, trying to also figure out the, my team members and how they want to operate and communicate with me. What's better for them as they're working from home and things like that as well. That's really helpful advice. For the record, I have literally never missed lunch. Um, as my team will tell you, I usually I will be on a call eating lunch. So I don't, I'm always impressed when people say that happens to them. And uh, finally, any fun shows you're watching, podcasts, books you're reading, anything you've been doing for, for fun on the side? Yeah, interesting. Um, I uh, recently did a little uh, video. Another great tip for your team members. We did little videos and sent it out to the team about what we were doing working from home. I was surprised at how popular my video came out to be. Uh, but I actually uh, use, if you're in a small space, many of my team members are in small space. You have a very large TV, this very large screen that has nothing on it when you're in that particular room. What if you could make something out of that that made you feel like you're in a different environment? So my two favorite things are to recommend is they're on Netflix. One of those is called The Fireplace. It basically is nothing but a fireplace that plays for an hour and it turns your TV into a fireplace and it just, I think it warms the room up. I'm reading a book by the fireplace. It just, I don't know, makes me feel a little bit better. And the second thing is another one called Moving Art. And Moving Art has starts out with a series of, of nature. So you have a forest uh, scenes for an hour, oceans for an hour, deserts for an hour. And then it actually goes on to uh, uh, tropical or distant locations. You can have Africa, you can have Fiji, you can have Thailand. And it's just a, a visual of what that environment or geography is like that you could pretend like you were visiting or maybe you want to take a trip there, but it actually lets you go through that. And it actually takes this, this big TV screen that we have that's very dark and cold and turns it into something that's very interesting that actually makes us think about something else besides being stuck at home. That is so cool. And you said that's on Netflix, right? Netflix, correct. Okay. Yeah, I was starting to feel a little cooped up in my environment last week and feeling like I really needed a change of scenery. So that is great. I'm going to check that out. Um, well, thank you so much for talking to us, Jimmy. This was so helpful. I certainly learned a lot, and I know that everyone listening will too.